now for something completely different. We are going to do a little experiment here, and we're going to see if we can get five people up on stage to read a screenplay. Hi. My, my name is Eli Effinger Weintraub, and I'm one of Inspect's resident playwrights, and so it's part of a grand experiment. I uh, corralled some lovely volunteers to read an excerpt from a script I'm working on. A uh, working title, I Hate You But I'll Save You, uh, that will not last. Um, so, um, let's see. I don't even know what to say. Let's, let's just go. Um, so Actually, before we start, yes. I'll just do sort of a roll call down the road just to make sure we've got everybody at a good level. Okay, so, so Leora will be reading the role of Maggie. Yeah. Hello, I don't know if this is on. Keep talking. Yes, this is on. Okay, I'll get a little closer when I speak. All right. uh, Catherine will be reading Sigrid. Hi there. Um, Keep talking. Okay. okay. Um, Definitely on. Dar as Shell. Hello. And Tim as Howie. Hello. Yeah. Great job, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a little more. Excellent. Be up here on stage without a harmonica. Excellent. How's that sound? 1985, a funeral home in a small Midwestern town. Shell and Howie, in suits, stand looking into a casket. He looks dead. Because he is. When someone dies, everyone says they look peaceful or like themselves, whatever that means. But he doesn't look peaceful, and it's been ten years since I saw him. So I don't know if he looks like himself. He just looks dead. And strangely healthy. Except for being dead. No, I mean, he doesn't look like someone who spent the last six months fighting opportunistic infections. Something weird's going on here. Hey, look at me. Why are we here, Howie? Your mother asked. She commanded. I can't remember the last time I heard her like that. Shell pulls a corded phone from behind the casket and steps downstage with it. Emphasis shifts from Howie to Shell to indicate their apartment. Sigrid enters, also carrying a phone, hand set to her ear. Shell's phone rings. He answers. Hello? Shell? Shell drops the phone and scrambles to pick it up. Mom? Are you alright? Not really. You, you're calling me. A mother can't call her own son. After five uh -huh. years without a word? Phone lines run both ways, and my number never changed. Why are you calling? How are you? <laughs> we haven't talked in five years, and ex you expect me to believe you called to catch up? I've missed you, Shell, and Howie. You're, you're adults now, with adult lives, and, and, and probably jobs of some sort. And I missed it all. So yes, I would like to catch up. I'm fine, Mom. Happy even. I teach U.S. history and civics. They let you teach children? Teenagers. It's a special school for gay and lesbian high schoolers who've been kicked out of their homes. What kind of parent would do that? Besides you? I didn't kick you out. You just heavily implied we wouldn't be safe if we stayed. What do you want? When was the last time you saw Greg? Cousin Greg? Not since he graduated from college. He died this morning. What? Shit. How's Aunt Jackie holding up? Poorly. What happened? I mean, he's what, 30? 28. He, well, he was like you. Aunt Howie. Yeah. He was very sick. You can say AIDS, Mom. You can't catch it from saying it. Things were very bad at the end. They usually are. That's why we need you to come home for the funeral. What? You and Howie both, if you still know where he is. There we go. I don't know. How could I know? Five years without a word from either of you. For all I knew, before you answered the phone, you could have been dead. How would you, would you have felt about that? How would you have felt you were dead and hadn't told your mother? Hadn't told you? That I was dead? Yes! Well, I'd be dead. And I wouldn't know. Mom, I'm not dead. How is not dead? He's at a meeting. Oh, so you two still... Yes, we're still together. That's, that's good, isn't it? Very good. And you'll come to the funeral together. Why? Because Greg is your family. I haven't seen him in ten years. I don't think Howie I even ever met him. We need you. It's a funeral. The only person who needs for a funeral is the dead one. We have things to talk about. So talk. Not over the phone. You said it yourself. 
We have lives here, jobs, a dog. We can't drop everything and come back for a funeral of a distant relative I haven't seen in a decade. He's not a distant relative, he's a close one who died doing very important work and you need to be here to help us continue it. Important work? What the hell are you talking about? Is it money? If you can't afford tickets or gas money or whatever, I can wire you something. No, we don't. What do you mean, you died doing important work? You just said... Shell Phillips Amundsen will come home for this funeral. Do you understand? I understand. Shell and Sigrid hang up their phones. Sigrid exits. Shell puts the phone behind the casket. Emphasis shifts to casket area. I don't understand. I remember her ordering us to come. The next thing I remember, I called the airline and bought their seats. Your mother and my Jedi tricked you into coming to a funeral? Well, sure, when you say it like that, it sounds insane. Did that ever happen to you? Did you do something for her that you don't remember agreeing to? Maybe. She's a mom. That's what they do. My mom could do it. You remember what a stellar example of maternal affection she was. It was just, I don't know. I wouldn't have agreed to come up with home. She must have. Why are you here? I came home and you put a plane ticket in my hand. But I mean work and Bassey. We just walked away. This is bothering you a lot, isn't it? I thought, I thought we were done with this. I thought things were normal. Sigrid and Maggie enter. They stand to the side of the room and watch Shell and Howie, who don't see them. There they are. Happy now? Of course I'm not happy. How can you even... I did this for you. You did it because it had to be done. Those are my sons, Maggie. And Greg was my brother. Don't act like you're the only person with something to lose here. If we had any other option, I would take it. Would you? You and Howie, how can you say that? I know what's at stake, Aunt Sig. Maybe better than you do. I'm not post putting anyone's life at risk over a stupid high school breakup. I'm telling you everything. The elders decided. I don't give a damn what the elders decided. Fools, a lot of them. I hold them responsible for Greg's death. I won't have Shell and Howie going in blind. I'll tell them everything. And I hope to God they say no. Aunt Sig. You know what happens if they say no. We find someone else. That's what happens. We lose. There's no one else. Howie is literally our last chance at this. A shame for us, then. Millions will die, but my boys will live, and that's enough for me. I forbid it. Forbid it? I outrank you. I'm so sorry, old sick, but we have to finish this. Thank <laughs> you.